kitty. Come on. Here you go, kitty. Here's your milk. That's a good kitty. Yes, it's a nice little kitty. Somebody gave me some advice. 
Don't be afraid to be scared. It goes along with the job. We got a kid up here. You got it. You're gonna be okay now. You gotta get my cat. My cat. Don't oh, worry, he'll be safe.
here. From the snorkel, east side of the building. Got it, Dan. Start the fire. Come on, let's get you out of here. Channel 10. Give me a rundown of that building, please. Subject building, abandoned warehouse, owned by Dr. Carol. not take any chances with it. Very funny. Goomba. Ted, my wife thanks you. My kids thank you. And I thank you. Hey, Al, in case you forgot, there were two superheroes up there. One, two. Come on, if you didn't come along just then, there'd be a widow and three orphans named Martelli. Say hello to the orphan maker. Code red, code red. Roger truck number 51. Extend lines to protect exposures on east and west sides of the building. Ed, you all right? Yeah. You're Haley Green, Joe Rorschach. Captain? Uh, we met before, you know. Oh? At your 10th birthday party. Your dad and I were on the same truck of threes before he got killed. He'd be proud of you. Hope so. 
Looks like a bad one, doesn't it? Yeah. Everybody okay? Well, everybody except the torch. What was left of him. Where is he now? Well, he's at the burn center. Chris blew him in. Uh, at least this time, it was the torch who got burned instead of somebody else. Was he able to talk? Did he say anything? Well, Dad, he, he told me he didn't start it. But uh, there was a gasoline can on the floor right now where I found it. Where's the gasoline can now? Well, it's still up there. That can was evidence. Dad, it was the can or the guy. Yeah. You're right, you're right, I'm sorry. Second torch job this month on a property owned by a Dr. Gerald Brooks, and we still haven't got a case against him. We think he's involved, but we can't prove it. And he owns an old, broken-down retirement hotel. If that ever goes up. Well, we better get back. Captain? Well, it, we didn't have those, uh, those air things. Well, the good old days, huh? Yeah, we didn't have firemen with hair that long, either. Oh. Haley. Haley, we've been well, looking for later, you. Later, OK? I'll be happy to do this when I'm off duty. Oh, excuse us, gentlemen. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, Haley Green, L.A.'s first woman firefighter, on her way back into that burning warehouse. Captain Rorchek? Captain Rorchek? Captain, you've been around a while. What do you think about women in the L.A. Fire Department? That's a ridiculous question. 33,000 fires in this city last year, 20,000 people injured, we're short 300 firefighters, We'll take anyone and everyone who's good enough and has guts enough to get through that academy, man or woman. Does that satisfy you, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Air Unit 1 to Harbor Commander. Victim delivered to burn center. I was sure I was going to die. Oh, I know, son. There's nothing worse than being trapped in a fire. Do you know what the captain said about you? He said you were very brave, and that's something to be proud of. Well, I tried. You sure did. Tell you what, let's start all over again from the beginning. Now, what were you doing in the warehouse? Well, I have this clubhouse. I built it myself. And I like to go there to play. That early in the morning? Well, I have a feel tiger. I have to go there and stay long before I go to school. So you were feeding Tiger. And then what? First I heard a sound like a tin can. Then I heard a smash, like a bottle. Hmm. And then I heard the sound. Like, like an explosion? Yeah, except there wasn't much noise. Just like, vroom. Hmm. And then me and Tiger ran out of the clubhouse. And everything was burning. Did you see anyone? No. You hear anything about Martelli? Yeah, Haley called the hospital. They released him. I think he'd be back next shift. Did you know that Dad knew Haley's father? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him a couple times at the house. That was before you were old enough to know what was happening. I like that. It's nice. Thanks. I wrote it. They were kidding. About what? About sending me an original North American, a real Indian? I'm only part Indian. I started fighting forestry fires in Montana when I was 14. How long have you been with the fire department? Five years. What made you switch to arson? I saw too many people die in torch fires. Well, we're going to 
see some more soon. We don't get some answers real quick. Welcome. except inspect the hell out of it and set up a pre-fire plan just in case it does become an arson target, regardless of our efforts. Now, I know I don't have to say what I'm about to, but I'll feel better for having said it. How many people live or die may very well depend upon all of you. Fire station one. Uh, hold on, please. Joe. Watch it. Mm -hmm. Now, be right there. The torch is conscious. But they don't know for how long. The way it reads now, the firebomb was supposed to ignite gasoline fumes, but it went off too soon. Now, Ted, I want to know exactly what the torch said to you. Well, he we kept begging me not to leave him, and he said over and over, I didn't start it. <laughs> That's exactly what I would have said if I'd been caught in my own fire. Sure. Except I don't know why, Dad, but I believe him. I think he was way too scared to even think about lying. They're never too scared to lie. You get on the arson squad, you'll Dad, find I that out. I have up no here. intention of getting on the arson squad. I like it right where I am. Okay, Ted, even if you want to stay where you're at, you can still study for promotion. Both of you, I'm happy, okay? No ambition, Dad. No drive. I don't think he's a roar check. They switched babies on you and Mom. No, no, no. He looks like his mom. Doesn't act like her, but he sure looks like her. Come on, take her up, Chris. This one, Joe. He refused to tell us his name or anything about himself. They're all problems, Dennis. We'll start with Finger Brace. It's not that easy. We're fighting gangrene. His hands are critically burned and infected. He may lose them. And if he survives, his face will need months, maybe years of grafting. It'll never be the same. The truth is, if he doesn't choose to tell you who he is, you may have a devil of a time finding out. This is Captain Rorchek of the arson squad. I hear we're playing games about who we are. I'm nobody. Doc's gonna make me over into somebody, right, Doc? Something like that. Thanks, Doctor. Just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, son. How many times have you been busted for arson? Never. No, you're lying. All this identity bunk, you're hiding a record. Got no record. I got nothing. This is the first day of my new life. Oh, no, Carl, no, no. It's the same old miserable one. Because I'm going to find out who you are, whether you help me or not. The only chance you have for any kind of life is to play ball with me. Now, tell me about you and Dr. Gerald Brooks. Who? Brooks, like in babbling Brooks, you know? He collects the insurance on the fires you torch. Leave me alone. I'm just a bum who happened to flop in that dump last night. Now, son, we have your gasoline can. We have what's left of your firebomb. Firebomb? What firebomb? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Just get out of here. Get out! Get out! <laughs> uh, have you seen Town and Country? No. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Where's everybody going? Well, probably home. Our shift just got off. Does she get off too? No, Sophie here works all the time. Well, what can he do for you? Well, my name is Rick Ortiz, and I was in the fire this morning. We know. Lucia, that's my foster mother. She said I have to thank the guys who saved me and Tiger. But I was so scared. They wore masks mostly. I didn't know what they looked like. Well, you lucked out, Rico. I'm Ted, and uh, this is Haley. She pulled you out of there this morning. This is my brother, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, how you doing? Hi, Ted. Hi, Haley. Hey, wait a second. You put me on. <laughs> nope. A good-looking head like you? Wow. <laughs> 
Rico, how would you like your own private tour of the station house? With you? Yeah, sure. Well, come on. Hey, guys. See you later. Hey, is she married? No. Right on. You think the kid's in love? I think so. It's a good day for some sun. Why don't you come down to the boat? Uh, thanks, but I'm scheduled to do some more flying with the Army pilots on the Chinook helicopter. We're getting ready to take the SMS up. Where do you see this aerial platform in action? It's, it's like a flying fire engine. So while you're sunning yourself, I'll be learning how to get... You'll be enjoying yourself. you love every minute. <laughs> you know something? You're right. I do. Look, Ted, why don't you come out with me and learn something for a change? The only thing I want to learn about today is the sun, the sand, and a particular young lady. <laughs> Preparing background of Brooks ever since the first fire. He's got half a dozen malpractices pending against him. The Medical Association is investigating his credentials, and his income is way down. I find your tone of questions extremely offensive, Captain. All we're asking for is your cooperation. By that you mean an admission of guilt. We know that your empty warehouses were heavily mortgaged, that you were about to lose them. We also know that the fires were deliberately set. I have to take your word for that. We have one of the arsonists. Oh? And has he told you that I hired him? He will. I guarantee it. Captain, you're a marvelous study in pent-up rage. I suppose it's because you live in a constant state of frustration since nobody ever feels sorry for insurance companies. Arson is murder. An arsonist is a murderer, the worst kind of murderer, Doctor. He kills indiscriminately. Children, old people, Doctor. I'd appreciate it if you took your anger out on someone else. My wife, these men are from the arson squad. How do you do, Mrs. Brooks? Uh, Mr. Raincloud. May I offer you something? Coffee, perhaps? That won't be necessary, Sharon. They were just leaving. Well, thank you just the same. But I'm sure we'll be back, perhaps another time. How long have you been married? A year. She's an ex-stewardess out of Chicago. What's next? My son, Ted. Bye-bye. 
investigators on duty at one time the whole city six Johnny and me we take zone two all of it just the two of us 7,000 arson fires last year so when I ask my son for a little bit of help I sure hope I'm going to get it okay dad you're right I'm sorry so uh, what do you want me to do the torch wouldn't give me his ID they got him bandaged up like King Tut I can't even get fingerprints off him you had a look at him, though, right? Well, yeah, sort of. I think he's somewhere between the ages of 18, 22, somewhere around there. And he's got a record. He's climbing up too much. Come on over here, sit down. Now, that's the mugshot book of all the tortures we know in that eight bracket. Find him. So how'd you like it? It's kind of fun. But not enough fun to take your mind off Al Martelli. Guilty. I know something that might help. Sunday dinner with the Rorschach. That's kind of a tradition. Sounds Lots good. of great food. Chris, but I... I want you to be there. Chris. want to have a good time. Chris, Ted's already invited me. Oh. Well, you're going to have a good time. I want you to meet Mom. She's quite a lady. Hi. What? I seem to have made a little mess. Oh, I wouldn't have noticed. Yes, I came home hoping my good wife would be around to help me, but uh, she wasn't around. Nope, she was at school taking final exams. What are you looking for? Oh, nothing much, just a clean shirt. At this hour? I've got to go back to work. I'll be sleeping at the station for the rest of the week. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that you'd be needing that much clean clothes at one time. I, I haven't done the laundry yet. Just set the washer on warm and the dryer on cool. Me? Sorry, I've got to study. Well, uh, never mind. I'll, I'll buy some new ones. <laughs> and what's the hurry? Why don't you take a semester off? Uh-uh. I waited a long time to go to college, Joe. I'm 44. That's the hurry. Hello. Captain, after 43 stops, I finally hit Peter with that mugshot that Ted picked out. Yeah, it's a positive ID. The clerk remembers selling him the gasoline cans. In fact, I have one right here in front of me, an exact duplicate of the one that we found. Good work. I'll be right there. How about a cup of coffee before you go? No, I better not. I'll uh, see you soon to pick it up. Call me now. You know I worry. Sure, sweetheart. Uh, how do you think you made out of the exams? Hmm? All right, I hope. <laughs> I'll miss you. I always do. That's good. Sometimes I hate this work. I think that I would hate living with you if you didn't have this work. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. 
Anybody in this company could have lifted that crate and gotten me out of there. But she couldn't do it. Not until Ted came along. You're wrong, Al. Nobody could have lifted it, not alone. Cap, she just doesn't have it. Okay, Martelli, you've made your point. I'll think about it. Yeah, and while you're thinking about it, somebody's gonna get killed. I'm gonna try and forget you said that. But if you ever come on to me like that again, I'll have you up on charges. Now get out! That's all, Ted. Hey, wait, wait a minute. What did Benton say? Well, he... Uh -huh. <laughs> I told you not to do that. Sorry, but it looked like fun. Hey, you're supposed Ouch. to land on your feet, Rico. You know, a firehouse may look like fun, but everybody here has a job to do. Hey, I gotta go. So give me a job! I will call it promise! Okay, okay, Rico, I tell you what. We're trying to train Sophie to be a show dog. Do you want the job? Yeah, okay, but what do I do? Well, I'll tell you as soon as we get back. Go sit in the kitchen and stay out of trouble. Task Force 1, Rescue 40, Battalion 6. Respond to overturned tanker, leaking flammable liquid with the driver trapped. She broke up lettuce. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> She's a girl of many talents. <laughs> you know, you are all terrific. It's been a while since I felt so relaxed and good. Uh, pretty soon you're going to feel relaxed and full. You're always welcome here. Thank you, Captain. And stop that Captain stuff, huh? When you're here or off duty, the name is Joe. You know, I feel happiest of all when we're all around this table. <laughs> I'll drink a toast to that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. The eggs are ready. The hot pads are right there. Would you get them out? You know, when I was your age, the idea of women firefighters was, was like science fiction. Would you have joined up? I'm not sure I was brave enough. 
You're a lot braver than I am. Waiting at home is tougher than doing the job. Well, that kind of bravery is expected of a woman. Yours isn't. Ah, uh, put one egg on each one of these. But I know one of your problems, though. Not having another gal down the station to talk to. Hmm? You're right. <laughs> Oh, if you ever need a sympathetic ear. Oh, thanks, Anne. It's really sweet of you, but I know how busy you are. You're my team. I'm rooting for you. A lot of people are. And then again, a lot of people aren't. Is something wrong? At the moment, lots. With these little thrusters, the SMS can maneuver itself right against the side of a high-rise where hoses and ladders can't reach. Yeah, but has this thing actually been used in a high-rise fire yet? No. We'll be the first department to try it. Mm -hmm. But I've worked with it, and I'm convinced that it can save lives. Well, I think it's great. Just great. But I'm worried. About what? About what Mother's going to say when she sees what you've done to the napkin. Oh, God. <laughs> you I'm hungry. Pull. So am I. Out in the kitchen. We're hungry. It was blended into the glass by the heat. That would make it part of a self-igniting fuse in a firebomb. A very sophisticated firebomb. Yeah. Very sophisticated. Just doesn't add up. We've identified the kid in the hospital. Art Walden. Small-time arsonist. Two-bit record. Pours gasoline out of a can. Walton was found up here. The fire started down here with a high-tech incendiary device. That doesn't fit Walton's MO at all. Listen, have you been able to reconstruct the serial numbers from the glass shards that we found? Mm, we think we've got it over here. Have a look. Thank you. I'll take down these numbers. Three, six, eight. Four, six, one, two. Put that on the computer to ATF in Washington, please. Three, six, eight. Four, six, one, two. Fortress Glass Company. Entire production to alcoholic beverages division. Best Buy, Food Chain, Chicago, Illinois. Well, the bottle came from Chicago. You think we could have had two torches? Two? Try to get a reading on high-class arsonists out of Chicago with an ammo involving fire bombs. You've got to have authority in your voice, like this. Sophie, come. 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 Come on. Come. No, down. Down. Sit down. Sit. Oh, yes, Sit. sir. That's a voice of authority, uh-huh. <laughs> down. Rico, you call. <laughs> For. All I'm asking you is, is for once to back me up about something. Hey, look at the student, will you? Guy gets married and all of a sudden he turns ambitious. Yeah, you mean his wife does. Am I interrupting anything? No, sir, stuff. Pull up the seat, buddy. This joker was just telling me how he wants us to back him up with uh, Captain Benton about Haley. Look, I've been at once for eight years. You guys are like my family. All I'm saying is if we all stick together, the only one that has to go is her. Oh, look. Before I got hurt, we quit playing basketball. The team drafted a hotshot rookie. Gave him a three million dollar contract. Yeah, that kid from Ohio State. Yeah. But well, we all figured we were better off without him. So we froze him out. Yeah, man, we made him look bad, all right. But something else happened. We started feeling lousy about ourselves. And the team went to hell. But this isn't the same thing. Sure it is, Al. You're asking them to 
gang up on a rookie so you can keep the old timers together. Stay out of this, Ted, please. Hey, buddy, I work at this firehouse, too. Oh, remember? yeah, you work at the firehouse. Fine. You got a thing for Haley. What are you saying, Martelli? You and Haley, I'm not stupid. I know what's been going on. Hey, hey, hey! hey. Serious man, you too? You're the one that brought her to Sunday dinner, didn't you? Yeah, well, you're the one that's been dating her. Dating her? Dating? I took her to the movies a couple of times. She's a friend. I'm trying to cheer her yeah, up. What do you think I've been doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to cheer her up, man, just like you. Are you sure? Yeah, about me. But I've been wondering about you, pal. Well, I told you that. <laughs> Blake. <laughs> Lake. What's so funny? Nothing, Cap. Ted, meet your father in front of the Brooks Hotel in 20 minutes. Yes, sir. Fire inspection. We just had one last week. What's this? The place is a crematorium waiting to happen. I'll see you later. <laughs> to Mr. Rogers, dear. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Captain, it's only a few days since the inspection. We haven't had time to correct all the violations. What about the broken down fire escape ladders? They're going to be repaired. When? As soon as our contractor can get to them. And the exit lights? The wiring's got to be redone. We're negotiating with an electric... Negotiating? Electric... Captain, if you don't think we're moving quickly enough, I suggest you talk to Dr. Brooks' lawyer. Well, I'm talking to you. Look around. Start up there. This place is a death trap. Look, sir, let's be reasonable. You don't even have sprinklers or smoke alarms. The fire code doesn't require them in a building this old. The smoke detection code went into effect last year. But what about the moral code? How many people have to die before you recognize your responsibilities? Captain, I must ask you to leave. Dad, I, I think we better go, huh? You know what happens to Dr. Brooks if we do cite him? He's a lousy fine. Arson one from Rain Club. Arson one from Rain Club. Arson one, Rochek. Captain, the mugshots just came in from Chicago. I'm on my way, clear. Dad, I've got an idea I may need you. Follow me. Sure, Dad. <laughs> I know that you were working with another torch. I also know he double-crossed you, tried to kill you. He tossed a firebomb while you were putting the gasoline around. You crazy. I didn't do nothing. Come on in. Doctor tells me that you were asking about the fireman who saved your life. 
You remember my son, Ted? Hi. Your son? That's right. My son. It makes me sick to think that he risked his neck to, to save a two-bit punk like you. Yeah, take it easy. He's been through a lot. What do you want me to do, apologize to him? He was set up. He's too dumb to even know it. What's he talking about? I don't know. Listen, it, it's nice of you to come all the way down here. I just told the doc I, I want to say thanks. Like for giving me your air mask. You didn't have to do it. Yeah, forget it. Uh, how you feeling? Pretty crummy. I guess it's still better than the morgue, though, huh? Yeah, right. Feel a whole lot worse after ten years in the joint. Ten years? Come on. Maybe more than that. After I get through with him in court, I'm gonna try to send him up for life. Listen, Art. He can be a real hard nose. Believe me, I know. He's my father. Now, suppose Art helped you out. Go on, I'm listening. What did he mean you were set up? I... Nothing. Nothing. Well, I'll tell you. Brooks hired one of those men. And that fellow turns around and hires him so he can roast him. So we close our case. Is that true? You're protecting a guy that tried to kill you? Why? Art, it, it doesn't make any sense. You can still do yourself some good. Which one was it? Come on, which one? That one. Sam Buell. Okay. Where do we find him? I don't know. Where's he staying? He never said. Think! A hotel? Somebody's pad? Where? Dad, give him a chance. I don't know. Wait. I think it was a hotel. I remember one time he said he had to get back to the hotel because he had a girl waiting in his room. Did he mention the girl's name? Anything about her? No, nothing. I thought he brought her with him. Said she's from Chicago or something. Chicago. Buell. Hey, a large hotel isn't much to work with. We'll hit the swanky hotels first. According to the computer packet, Buell travels first class. Oh, Johnny. Uh, just for the heck of it. Put a tail on Mrs. Brooks. About the power next. Okay, Jim. Code red. Code red. Dispatch to Arson 1. Dispatch to Arson 1. Ask him one, Roger. Go ahead. Donovan has an update on the Sharon Brooks surveillance. Hi, Captain. Miss Brooks left the house at about 5.30 and came straight here. Now, I managed to get this photograph, and some guy in room service recognized her. She spends a lot of time in Suite 6337. It's registered in the name of a Mr. Williams. Williams, 6337. Thank you. Good work. talking about? Sam Buell. No, look, my name is Williams. Save it. The kid you tried to roast identified you from a mugshot. Hey, you must be mistaken. Open up. You're under arrest. I wouldn't do that. Stay down. Here. Up. Sam, what time did you 
did you say you had to be at the airport tomorrow? <gasps> Hello, Mrs. Brooks. So it wasn't the doctor who hired you. She did it, right, Sam? Do you see the time there? What about it? There's a... No, Sam, don't! Shut up! It's, uh, it's 7 o'clock. There's a firebomb set to go off in Brooks Hotel. I'll make a deal with you. That firebomb. So I'll make a deal with Where's you. Where's the bomb? Good evening. What? Start evacuating people as fast as you can. The device is in the basement storage area, under a pile of draperies in the center of the room. Call everyone. There's going to be an explosion. Hello? Hello? OCD. <laughs> Lobby control, task force five staging, task force one search and rescue. There are people trapped on the upper floors and we can't get them. The SMS is the only chance they've got. Okay, Mike, get it on the way. Right. OCD from command post. <laughs> Red, code red, engine number 42. We've got to extend 
Construction apparatus line, construction number 51, lattice building, makes an attack on real building. How's it going, Mike? Uh, that's a rubber. Was anyone hurt? Yeah, quite a few. That five minute warning of yours saved at least 50 lives. Captain Roger. I want you to know I had nothing to do with this, Captain. I know, Doc. But your wife did. She's under arrest. Sharon? Yes, so is the torch she brought in from Chicago. Your wife wanted a lot of insurance money in the pot before she divorced you. <laughs> she wouldn't divorce me. Sharon loves me. We have a statement. She wouldn't let those people die. No more than I would. Doctor, maybe you didn't set any fires, but I inspected that building. And you're as much a potential murderer as she is. <laughs>
Most of you know our guest tonight, Ann Rorschach. In fact, some of you have come in off duty tonight to share this evening with her. Well, she finished her second year at L.A. State today. Yeah. And I figured she deserved a special treat. Dinner with Task Force One. Yeah. <laughs> Trouble is, I forgot one thing. Al Martelli was doing the cooking. Oh, oh, <laughs> but I got to be minding when I saw the pasta all over the wall. <laughs> so you tell if it's done, if it sticks to the wall, it's ready. <laughs> that lasagna wouldn't pass muster with Ann's cooking on Sunday nights. Oh, I thought it was very good. Thank you. Hey, Rico, you ever had Wiener Schnitzel a la Rochek? No. But I'd like to try. <laughs>